probably a um, long-awaited room tour video. I haven't actually done one of these uh, in quite some time. Um, I've always been dissatisfied with the state of my room and how messy it is. Now, it's still what I'd call um, clean, uh, but it's probably going to change a little bit soon because I'm going to um, the couches that you'll see in the following video will potentially be moving out and then I'll be able to rearrange things and maybe get things a little closer to how I'd like them. So I thought, well, that's a good enough excuse, if any, to finally catalogue where my room's at and to give you guys a quick little show. Um, in an effort to not make the video too long, I'm not going to go through uh, too much detail on the individual games. Um, but I'll give you a bit of an overview and then talk about you know some of my favourite parts of the collection. Um, and as it stands at the moment when I'm making this video, I have over 100 systems. I think it's about 107 different systems. That doesn't count duplicates. And over 2,500 um, game titles. Uh, now one part of the collection I'm not going to show is my modern stuff that does in is included in the 2,500 count. Uh, but I don't have anywhere near as much modern stuff as I do retro stuff, so the majority of the 2,500 collection is retro. Yeah, I have a problem. Alright, without further ado, let's get on with the tour. Right, so here we go coming into the room and giving you a bit of a pan from this angle. You notice it's a well, double garage and there's quite a bit of space inside it. Um, I do apologise in advance, I do suffer from shaky hands. So in this corner we have my, uh, well there's various bits and bobs on the bottom shelf, but we have my PSP and Jaguar collection, my Atari Lynx, and Sony Vita. Um, and then above that we have, in the right hand corner there, you've got my Game Gear. Um, couple of my um, PAL Game Boy Advance box games that I have and then my Intellivision collection um, obscured a little bit by a couple of my active magic card decks that I play occasionally still I've been trying to get the girls into it so I can play it some more um, zooming out a bit we have my PlayStation 2 title collection there are a couple more kid-centric titles that are still in the house that are used by my youngest uh, but pretty much all of the girls no longer uh, are into the PlayStation 2 they've moved on to other things um, and then stepping back a little bit we have my main actual game playing section so we have a low TV which has which has SCART RGB in um, and we have all of these systems are hot plugged in, ready to go. Um, some minimal changes with shared power supplies and things. Um, everything's triggered so when you turn the TV off it shuts off the power to the rest of the devices. thus protecting them from spikes and things like that. Um, on top of the TV I have a bit of a Coleco you know, hardware accessory display. Um, on the right we have uh, my original Xbox 360 uh, that a friend of mine gave me, uh, my original Xbox uh, Atari Jaguar which is a system that I used to own back in the day, I uh, didn't own it for very long because unfortunately it was when I was closing my shop up and I couldn't afford to keep it. Finally got one again in the last year and have thoroughly enjoyed getting the titles for it. Uh, then we have my Japanese Dreamcast with its arcade stick uh, squishing it at the moment. Um, primarily got that for homebrews and things, don't really have a lot of Dreamcast titles. Um, I finally do have Pierre Solar, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, then we have my Japanese um, Saturn, whose disc tray seems to be open at the moment, I don't know why. Um, and in the back of it I have an action replay uh, card, so I can replay all regions, but I primarily play Japanese games on that one. Uh, then below that, a little bit dusty at the moment, probably because it's close to the bottom of the rack, is my Neo Geo CD, another one of my systems I really like a lot. And below that is my um, Panasonic 3DO. I actually have two 3DOs. Uh, the other one needs a little bit of cap work done on them. But 
Right, so coming out again, I'll cover the systems underneath in a minute. We'll just go down the other side first. Uh, on top, we have my PAL Nintendo 64. Uh, then we go down to my two GameCubes. The black one is my original PAL GameCube, and the one on the left is my Japanese one. The next shelf down, that's where the um, my Super Nintendo sits when it's not being used. It can't sit in there when it's got its action replay um, device in there because it's too tall and it's currently sitting it on the floor of the game in it. Then we have my Japanese Nintendo 64 and we have um, my PAL and Japanese PlayStation ones. Yes, no, I need to get a chip one or get one chipped. And then we have a PlayStation 2 Slim which looks like a bit dusty at the moment as well. And then hiding in the back there we have my PAL Mega Drive. Uh, it also has an action replay sitting in it at the moment. And in front of it, sitting on the floor, is my PAL Super Nintendo with um, the Japanese copy of Super Alest sitting in it. So um, I'll just cut here and then I'll open the cabinet underneath. Right, so this is the cabinet underneath the TV. On the top left we have my... PC Engine Turbo Duo R um, and sitting on top of that is my original PC Engine with the um, EverDrive cartridge in it. Sorry for the handshaking, but always apologise for that. We have my um, fully modded uh, with both FM mod and region modded um, Sega Mars System Model 1, which is my favourite model. Underneath that we have my Intellivision, that's, I haven't done anything, that's one of my RF devices. Then we have my NTSC Top Loader, I have not modded that either, I use RF out for that one. As a dog wanders across. Then I have my Famicom version 2, which is great because it uses the uh, standard Nintendo AV out cord that all the other, like the Super Nintendo uses and the GameCube uses. Then, um, you now they have different controllers just plugged into them. I do have some arcade sticks I can use as well. Hiding back there is my Atari 7800. And there we have my current AV modded working ColecoVision. I've got a second one that I'm going to do up with a new, with a complete replacement power switch and replacement RAM, which I'll cover a little later. And the front port's open because I usually have a super game module coming in and out. And that's currently hiding just underneath the TV, just there. Alright, so you don't get pan signal, so I'll pause again and we'll come back to more overview. Right, now the next section of shells has a rather lot of games in it. So directly above the um, the other set the other console sections we have my um, Sega SG one thousand collection. There's my Mark III sitting down there. Um, then we have the, the loose titles, there's some loose titles in that little uh, grey, loose card titles in that little grey folder. Most of the shelf is uh, card titles, uh, there's one Mark III title that you can see. Um, then we have the smaller Japanese version box titles, and then this shelf is the majority of the shelf, bar the one, all the ones with the red writing are Australian ones, Australian New Zealand release ones, and the one yellow one is a Japanese large box release. So Japanese ones, some of the titles came out in large boxes as well as small boxes. I am not going to collect variants. <laughs> Say that now. And above that we have my Neo Geo CD collection. I'm trying to stabilise here for you guys. Um, as you can see my Dreamcast collection is very very small. I do have a couple more titles for that that I haven't done gameplay of. I'll explain about that in a, in a little while. Up there we have my Dick Smith Wizard title collection. I've got four boxed and quite a few loose. I think I'm only actually missing one title that I don't have a copy of. Then I actually have three titles for the sword, yes, the, um, the sword M5, two boxed and one loose. Uh, so Dig Dug Galax, which is Galaga, and um, Super Cobra. Then staying up this top section, we have my Atari 2600 boxed titles. Um, and I actually do have some Atari 5200 titles there. I do not have a system. 
they're hiding behind Pierre Solar for the Dreamcast, which unfortunately I was hoping to play in my holidays and I haven't had a chance to yet. So panning down, working our way down, we of course start my MSX collection. Uh, one of the pride and joys of my collection is my MSX title collection. I have um, well over 200 titles for the MSX now. Uh, so moving down, you've got your Sony and your larger box cassette games and my boxed um, Namcot titles. Uh, you've got your Activision tape titles on the right. Uh, by the way, there's quite a few homebrew titles in the middle of that shelf there and some of my own. Uh, then we get down to my Konami shelf there. Um, quite pleased to have progressed that to have so many Konami titles boxed now. Um, they really do make some great or made some great games for the MSX over the years. It was one of their primary development systems. And um, you can pick pretty much any one of those, put it in and have fun. Now, there's some more Konami titles down here. Um, you're getting into your MSX2 era games for a lot of these titles. There still are a couple of MSX ones there. And of course, this section of the shelf is where a lot of the money is. So in there you have Space Mambo, Aleste 1 and 2, and Xanak EX, which is the MSX2 version. I don't have the MSX1 version. Um, but you've got Parodius there, you've got the Gradius games, you've got um, uh, Fantasy Zone, um, all sorts of games there. There's even the Laydock games and uh, Ease games as well, and King Kong 2, so all sorts of games there. Now moving down to the next shelf, um, we have a couple more homebrews in the bottom left there. Really sorry about my tremor, it's gotten bad worse lately. Um, lots of obs more obscure MSX titles and also uh, my own titles down there and the B card games. There's some boxed you can see back there. They are really, really rare. Um, not very common to get at all. They're actually not as pricey as some of the other games, um, surprisingly. Uh, you need one of those to be able to use them in an MSX though, so it doesn't make a difference. I won't open the drawers yet, I'll go down to the next shelf. So down here we have my, most of my MSX RPG collection. Obviously Yeez is up on the top shelf there, but I've got quite a few RPGs there. I collect them mostly for the materials they come with. And I'll, I'll finish off the MSX sections before uh, we open the drawer. Um, just the MSX collection has grown and flowed through. There's quite a few interesting titles there. Um, an MP3 player is just a box. There's no title in there. I just got sent a whole lot of boxes for that for some reason as packing material, so I've kept one of the boxes. Up here we have um, my small, I mean there were some um, title tape titles elsewhere, but that's mostly tape titles. Uh, we have a couple of cartridge titles on the edge there. There's an Exurian box there in the front line. Um, up here we have some more Sony titles, the larger box versions. Elite, which was kindly sent to me um, all the way from the Netherlands, and a few other miscellaneous MSX title. So much variety in the MSX as a system. Alright, slight cut and we'll go open that drawer. So these are my loose MSX cartridges. There are a couple more just to the side of the drawer as this drawer unit's full. Um, I'm very pleased especially to have those Activision loose titles because they seem to be quite rare and uncommon. Uh, a couple more uh, Namcot titles over there and Sony titles. Um, and more Konami titles. They made so many titles for the MSX. See, there are more that I don't have boxes for. Um, and a few other interesting obscure titles from other publishers. Shows the variety that was brought out for the system. Um, and I'll just go in there so you can see. I've got overflow loose cartridges in there. A couple of titles there. And there's some good homebrews there. And the Philips titles, which came in exactly the same case as the um, as the Odyssey 2 thing. So I've actually got Buck Rogers there and just missing a case. I'm probably going to uh, sacrifice an Odyssey title to box that up at some stage. Alright, we'll cut and we'll get back to the rest of the shelves. Okay, next part of the collection is my NES. Um, there is some Game Boy titles in the way there and a few Game Boy Advanced there. Um, they're just bits and bobs I've picked up. 
sort of thing. I enjoy the Game Boy titles more. I've got a, all my loose ones are in a folder, which we'll get to eventually. Um, but I, my NES titles are all packed in there. They are a, a mixture of PAL and NTSC. The majority of them are NTSC. And we go up to the next shelf. So I sort of have spilled over. Um, the EverDrive N8 Black Box 1 Game Australia 1 sent me and has helped out incredibly in my um, development of titles for the NES. Uh, a few good titles in there. Uh, I've got Xanak, which you enjoy. Um, 1942 is on top there because I've been playing it lately. And of course, I have the gold cart version of the cartridge that I wrote for the Game On Expo. And also a number copy as well. So, awesome items to have in my collection. Up here we have my PlayStation 1 PAL titles. Uh, of course, Middle Gear Solid is uh, that game that I never got to play back in the day because it got stolen along with my PlayStation 1 just after I got it one Christmas. Um, so I put it out there as one of my special titles and it ties in to the Konami titles that I like so much on the MSX. Now notice I do not have any of the Metal Gear titles for the MSX unfortunately. Um, they're extremely expensive and I've never been lucky enough to come across them. Okay, we'll go across this way because this is related to the NES. Of course we have my Famicom collection. So I stopped buying NES titles um, pretty much and switched to getting Famicom titles because they're much easier for me to get um, especially boxed complete, much cheaper, close to Japan um, and a little simple thing is my um, Famicom 2 is already output in AV so it makes it easier to play and of course there's a lovely copy of Crisis Force there so I did pay a little bit more for that than I normally do for a loose cartridge but I'm not prepared to pay how much a box copy so this first section really is my, sort of like my shooter collection for the um, Famicom going into a bit of a Nemcot boxed collection there right now we go down here a few more titles, a few loose titles in there my one lonely little um, disc system title and then some more titles, I've got the, um, the track and field games there we have another shelf down here my Famicom collection actually has come along quite well. There's a couple of Mega Man, oh, one of the Mega Man titles there, Mega Man 4, Load Runner titles there. I collect Load Runner across multiple systems. Now we flip systems again to Super Nintendo. Now these are a mixture of PAL and NTSC. Uh, there's a sealed Star Wars game NTSC version there sent to me by EdT1138 as a birthday present. Um, a little while back. Very much appreciate that game and it's one of my favourites from back in the day so that's very very sentimental in my collection. Um, and down here we have the, my first shelf of loose 2600 games all packed in there. A little bit double stacking going on. And down here a couple more boxed um, Atari 2600 titles. These were the later HES releases. Uh, they have all manner of titles mixed in them. So they do duplicate some titles I have loose otherwise. And more titles down there. There's a little obscure handheld little device there. It's quite a nice little handheld. Alright, we'll pause and we'll go up top. Right, so next we have these CD racks. Uh, they contain PC Engine here and here. And going up the top there as well. I've sort of separated out the CD and the Hukar titles. Over here that is Japanese PlayStation. A bit harder to work out what the titles are. I've got those Namco classics a couple of times. <laughs> and up here is my Japanese Saturn collection. The first part of it are the shooters. And then we go into the other titles like racing titles and platformers and things. And up there are the boxes to my Dreamcast gear. Alright, now, middle shelf here um, has a couple of, uh, well, a piece of uh, Star Wars Lego, uh, a few systems uh, littered away on that top shelf there. There's an Atari portfolio, a few handhelds and things like that. 
and then we move straight down to my ColecoVision collection. Um, so the first part of the shelf on the left top are my original Coleco titles that are boxed. Then you move into my Collectivision area which includes my own title in the middle there, which is EA Classics. And then you have Team Pixel Boy titles in this section of the shelf. Then the titles I have loose. Um, Game Straighty One's game. And my small collection of Neo Geo Pocket games sit in that bottom corner there. Now moving down, we have my Nintendo 64 uh, loose power titles hiding in the corner there. And then panning along, we have my Japanese Nintendo 64 collection, which is which are all boxed and complete titles. One of my favourite ones that I've got recently has been the Perfect Dark with its strategy guide there in the middle, and also Star Fox there. I've got all of the Star Wars games in Japan, um, except for the Naboo one, but I'm not 100% sure whether that actually came out in Japan, as well as the um, in the other territories. Now on the right there, zooming in, we have my PAL um, Nintendo 64 games. I'm still missing a game from inside Naboo, um, but actually another YouTuber is going to um, give me a copy of that. A loose copy. Uh, I've got three cases of um, Neo Geo CD games that I've copied in the past just to play, because I don't think I'll ever get Metal Slug as an example. I have do have the Aero Fighters now have my um, Super Nintendo loose cartridges. They are a mixture of all three regions, Japan, US and PAL. And then going along here is my J Japanese Super Famicom collection so far. Shoot 'em up section on the very left and then normal tolls going through there. So yes, I finally do have a copy of Super Mario Kart. And then down on this bottom shelf, we have my PAL Saturn titles, uh, which I actually do have a fair number of. I have traded a couple of these away as I've replaced them with Japanese copies, though. And I'll probably continue to do that slowly. Um, that's a boxed ASCII stick to turbo for the PC Engine, and it's... Sitting in this little bottom corner down here is my 3DO collection. Okay, so our next section of shelves, we have basically our Sega's. Uh, mostly Sega's, there's a couple of things in there as well. On the right you have my almost complete world set of Sega Master System games. Where the gaps are, are where the missing titles are. Um, I don't believe I will probably ever get to a full set world set because there are some extremely hard titles to get. Not only do I not have the Smurf games yet, but I also do not have any of the Tech Toy releases, the ones released in South America. They are extremely hard to get hold of and really are more money than I'm interested in spending. But there are some titles there that I can still get. Um, I do have a couple of uh, US space releases that shouldn't be too hard to get. Uh, to the left in there I have my Sega Mega Drive collection. Right in the middle are my shooters for the Mega Drive, particular focus of my collection. But I do have quite a few other titles of various different things. I have lots of RPGs, um, a few platformers, um, and there's a few sport games down there as well. Um, sitting down there for some reason we have some uh, repro PC Engine titles that I haven't gotten around to playing. In there is a DS section. Most of these games are my children's that have just ended up here. There are a few titles that I've bought myself. Um, I do have my own DS now and occasionally play those. And then we have the Philips Video Pack titles. Um, they're you have to sit them out like that, otherwise you can't tell what they are when they sit by the side. You just get black sides. Um, and then, hiding here, I have my Terrace 80 um, colour computer titles. Um, there's actually a, a bit of software in that section, so not too bad. Right, up top here we have my Atari 7800 collection. Um, quite a few titles, quite a few titles boxed. 
there's an IntelliVoice sitting there. Um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles for the Japanese GameCube. And then we have my PAL GameCube titles. Most of those, well, a fair few of those I've owned since new. Uh, there are some more recent editions there, like Ikaruga and Die Hard. Um, three more um, Japanese GameCube titles. I'm I'm sort of just picking them up when they're cheap, if you know what I mean. There's no real particular focus there. Uh, now up here, we have the remainder of the Japanese GameCube titles. I actually have built up quite a few now. Um, Wii titles, that's not all the Wii titles I have. Do have a few more. They're just, I suppose, the ones that I'm more interested in myself, I suppose. Um, up here I have my original Xbox titles. That's and a couple more of those over here. I uh, haven't ever really expanded that collection. And then up here, for a, quite a long time, this hasn't changed for quite some time, is a whole heap of boxes. So, um, Virtual Gun for playing uh, Virtual Cop on the Saturn. My um, 3D glasses for my Master System. Behind there is an actual boxed Atari 400 uh, NTSC version. There's the box for my original Xbox, my PSP, uh, that funny handheld we looked at earlier, a Nexus tablet, which I think I gave away to somebody, my PAL virtual guns up there, um, I have another boxed in television there, another PlayStation 2 fat box. I've got I've actually got two in television um, voice modules, uh, and they're both boxed. So that voice module belongs in there. Uh, the box for my PlayStation Slim, my GW Zero box, uh, SingStar, Ouya, um, and the House of the Dead for the um, Dreamcast. I haven't actually played that, I realise. And hiding up in the top corner there are actually um, a couple more things. I'll have to come around here so you can have a look. We have a um, Sega Master System 2 box, and here is actually the original, original version of the Spectre Video 318, uh, the one with the red joystick, and I've got one of those boxed. And just sitting up here is a spare in television, although it doesn't work properly. Um, my Vita, uh, yeah, basically a box for my Vita. And a, um, a Commodore uh, Plus 4 tape deck, which is useless without a Plus 4. Over here we have a shelf that has uh, the folder with Game Boy on it. It has my Game Boy collection in it. I might add a little pan through that at the end. Boxes for a few systems. There's actually some more MSX titles there for the Yamaha Music, um, uh, music Computer, the CX-5. Um, VIC-20 Larger. Um, box stuff, a really nice art book, and my TRS-80 Model 3 system, uh, my Fallout Bomb uh, robot arm for the Spectre Video, the two different tape players that came out for Spectre Video, a remote control car, uh, the keyboard for the Famicom, my two Sega SC3000 systems, and my TI-99 4A. Um, Lots of magazines, CDs, and books are in this corner. And up on top, we have a couple of alien models, um, three Atari 2600 systems. Right, now here's a quick look at my Game Boy collection. So I made up this folder. Um, a couple of other YouTubers have done this as well. So I just printed up this cover to go with it and made the spine part. And I'm quite happy to just collect um, Game Boy titles. Uh, loose like this, well they're easy to store um, and they're an interesting little system to um, collect the games for. Some of these are mine from back in the day um, on this page I think it might be that R type and definitely that one it's another one with Defender uh, it took, got the two Nemesis games, Nemesis 2 is quite good um, R type 2 is quite a good version as well. You've got Twin B up there. 
this Empire Strikes Back is one of my original ones. Uh, I think that's Godzilla. Then you have Castlevania 2. Um, oh, for the life of me, the name of the game escapes me. Um, and this is another. Um, oh, that's Contra 2. Can't remember what that one is. Um, we've got Rockman World, Rockman World 2, Rockman World 3. I like collecting the Rockman stuff, not that I'm that good at playing them, I will admit. A few other games here, there's a Final Fantasy there, Tetris, and two of the Donkey Kong Land games. Mario Yoshi, Super Mario Land, uh, Super Mario Land 2, and a couple of miscellaneous manuals. So, and plus you add to it, I, I do have another one of the Castlevania games, the, the first one, that's the one that's actually inside uh, that I'm playing at the moment. So I have that by my bedside table. Um, so not a huge collection, but um, a nice little collection of titles I like playing. Panning to the left, we have boxes. Some of these boxes contain things, um, some of them don't. So Sega Saturn, one sticks out and one sticks behind. Those sticks up there are out. You'll see them in a little while. Uh, obviously that's my PC Engine Duo R. Behind it is my Duo, which isn't, the sound doesn't work on that at the moment. I've got the box for my Jaguar. Uh, behind it is the box for the Yamaha CX-5, um, box for my Auric Atmos, um, my 3DO FZ-1 Panasonic, it's actually in there, it needs repair. Down here we have some Star Trek Starships, more Star Trek Starships, Babylon 5 um, uh, board games, Babylon 5 scripts, couple box. Um, down here miscellaneous bits and pieces. See over in this area in general are our, some of our books from our family. So panning left. We have a few more shelves here with um, blank cassette tapes. There's a Tira 80 printer there. There's a few more boxes for systems hiding in there. PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, the um, Sword M5's hiding in there. Neo Geo Xbox and then we pan left and we have my two arcade machines the one built by my brother-in-law on the right there I'm still working on a new control panel um, and I'll put a face in it eventually and my original arcade machine there so it's got verticals in it, this has MAME in it for the moment up top a few more boxes of things so a spare Spectre Video 738 a um, Sony MSX printer the box for my iCade Retron 5, uh, Spectre Video MSX 80 column cartridge, PlayStation 2 Monster Rumble, can't quite see what's in the middle box there, graphics tablet, 3 to 8, the box for my Japanese GameCube, my Vic 20s on the bottom there. Over here we have um, a collection of Apple II software, which I haven't been able to play yet that basically was in the trailer ready to go to the tip when I um, had that um, TRS-80 Model 3 donated to me so I took those as well. Over here in this corner we have the Star Wars stuff that I've kept which is mainly Star Wars Lego more Star Wars Lego Star Wars role-playing game and and um, board game books and my Star Wars cards in that one folder. I've got quite a few of those. Um, now I've cleaned up all this section. It was very hard to see before. This is these are all my PC games. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. I've got quite a lot of them. Um, see, and you can see them a lot better now. Panning left below various daughters' dance trophies. We have my um, Spectrum collection that actually fit nicely there. Uh, next shelf down is my where my production area, where I'm um, putting together some of the titles that I sell on my Facebook page, and more empty cases and stuff like that. Stock ready to be produced. A couple of miscellaneous items on the floor. Uh, so panning back, we have 
the junk box, which, well, not, not junk box, I mean, it's got controllers and add-ons and cables and all sorts of things. Everybody has one of those. Uh, we have middle shelf here has stuff that I'm yet to play or fix. Uh, look, there's that other Coleco, a couple of joysticks, lots of floppy disks. Um, my trade items are squeezed in on that shelf there, along with some real items. Um, we have the other part of the Star Trek starships that I've been collecting, and a few Star Wars items there. Double stack novels, uh, lots and lots of magazines, and all of the... I collect space role-playing games and combat games so that's part of that collection there the Babylon 5 stuff won't fit there so um, we have um, Edge magazine Empire magazine uh, Wired magazine Australian personal computers I chucked a lot of those out um, and then Games Workshop magazines lead into the, the role-playing games down there um, panning around again, you get to see the room the other way around. Have my little work area, and you can see the retro computers there. Got a laser printer, my desk, a uh, little work area here where it plugs systems in. So these are the retro computers. They are packed in very tightly, very efficiently. You can see my Vectrex down there. Um, I have several Spectre Video drive add-ons. We've got Acon Archimedes, BBC, Model B, floppy drives for those, uh, Acon Aquarius, BBC Master Compact, Acon Electron, um, Terrasati Color Computer, Spectre Video 738, Spectre Video 328, Spectre Video 318, Auric 1, Auric Atmos, ZX80, then you have um, CPC 6, I can't remember the numbers now, 646 and 464, uh, my Amiga 1000 with external drive, Amiga 500 sitting on top of it, my Atari ST, um, 1040 STE with external hard drive, um, my original Super Expander for the Spectre Video, the Model 2 of the Super Expander, my Apple IIe platform, my other BBC um, B, um, spare Star Wars cup. Um, that is actually spare. I was thinking of giving it away in a competition. A stack of Vic 20 games. What are they doing there? I haven't done a video on those. Um, <clears throat> maybe I should. Uh, in these drawers are probably my Commodore 64 tape titles, all of my original Spectre Video tape titles. And I have a whole lot of tape titles for the SC, Sega SC3000 systems. And coming around, we're not going to look at my work area, but here we have this great big giant shelf here, which has um, books and software titles mainly for the retro computer systems. So, also got my Star Trek magazines there, but you have uh, MSX books and Amiga Books, Amiga Software, Atari ST Software going there. Then we have um, Vectrex titles there. I've got most of the Vectrex titles. Original Spec Video, um, Commodore 64 titles, more of them up there. My Atari 8-bit collection is there and mainly in that black box. I've got little loose cartridges. I'm like, I've got a few complete titles. Up there in that corner are my TI-99 4A titles. Uh, there's an extra add-on title for the Neo Geo X there. VIC-20 titles there. And then my joystick collection. All manner of joysticks. And up top we have a couple of knickknacks. Collectibles my kids and wife have bought to me over the time. Uh, that Ewok is actually from back in the day. And hiding up there, we've got a couple more systems. We have uh, my PAL ni original Nintendo and its light gun, and my boxed ZX81, which works perfectly as well. Now, before I wrap up this video, I'll just show you one more little section here um, in my main work desk. Obviously, that's a laser printer to the right. Now, here is my stack of retro computers. I have them on drawers for these lower systems. You've got my Commodore 64C with its Ultimate in it, 
a Spectrum 128K. Um, my Sony DVR, which I use to switch a lot of these things. Um, my Pioneer MSX1 with the video overlay. Philips MSX2. The Amiga 15... Um, I can't remember the model number, but Amiga monitor that displays just about everything. It's fantastic. Um, over on the far side, I have my Amiga 1200 and my Atari XE GS that I do for those videos. All right, we'll pan out again. I don't think I went in this corner of the video uh, of the uh, retro systems. You have my Yamaha CX5, and my Philips video pack, uh, my Sony. FXXD MSX2 Plus system from Japan. There's a um, MSX titling system in there, a couple of tape players, and then you have my Atari 8 bit system collection. There's quite a few different variants. My Commodore 64 breadbox hiding down there is my um, Dick Smith Wizard and a Micro B. And then we have an Einstein 256, the um, Neo Geo X, and a Spectre Video 728 there. Down on the bottom shelf, hiding away there, we have a Silicon Graphics 02. And in the corner there's just a server and, and some NAS drives that I use for storage. Don't think I've shown down there. Lots of floppy drives, my Vectrex. There's a later Archimedes there, and the other part of the BBC Compact. So, drawing out, looking at my retro computers, which is one of the favourite parts of my collection, we'll sign off the room tour for now. Um, and yeah, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.